You are listening to an MLGA Network podcast. The war on drugs was an abject failure. The war in Afghanistan is still going on after 18 years. I'd call that an abject failure. My war against that damn mouse is also an abject failure. I told you last week about how I cornered a mouse in a radiator and pulled it out with tongs, ran across the street, and threw it at a cat. What I didn't know at that time, and I know now, I know far too well now, is that mice are hydra. You cut off one head, two grow in its place. There's no such thing as a one mouse infestation. So as I'm putting together this episode this week, as I'm writing up my red pill, I hear not one, not two, but three little chewings going on throughout my house. Little mice. And so of course, what do I do? Do I take this sitting down? No. I stand up. I grab a nine-inch chef's knife, and I go to work. So yes, this week I did put together an episode for you. I also chased a mouse around the house with a knife and only stabbed it once. It chirped, but I'm pretty sure I didn't kill it. Is this interesting to you? No, probably not. Is it interesting to me? No, I am. I would rather it you know, just didn't happen at all. But I'm telling you anyway, because you're loyal. You're the reason I do this. All two of you. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again, the best damn liberty podcast that you've never heard of. I'll be your guide as we peer into the ridiculous reality that is our society and our government. Let's get to it. Welcome to Make Liberty Great Again. I'm your host, Cam Harless, and I'm just thrilled to be here just to share some sad and funny stories with you this week. But before we get started, I want to tell you, I did spend all day writing a Red Pill of the Week for you. If I'm being honest, I think it's pretty good. I think you'll enjoy it. But it won't be at the end of this episode, so don't get that in your head. It's not going to be at the end of this episode. Do you know why? I'm splitting it up. I like the segment so much that I'm going to start recording and releasing those episodes separately midweek. So we will have a brand new episode on a certain testimony of a certain person who got us into a war later on this week. But for now, you've got me all alone, talking into a mic in a room by myself. And you know what? We're going to get into it now. First story up on the queue is, you know, Michael Malice, I think, says it best when he says that conservatism is just progressivism driving the speed limit. Some may argue, that's not strong enough against conservatives. They're just as bad. Not the point of the say, but that's neither here nor there. Let's move on. Neocon Rick Wilson got on Twitter this week to take up the left's position that people who do not vaccinate their children should be sent to re-education camps, have their property seized, and have their kids taken by CPS. Yes, let me actually read it to you word for word. Rick Wilson tweeted on December 6th, Anti-vaxxers are a scourge and a strong argument for re-education camps, the immediate seizure of their property, and putting their children into protective custody. You know, I used to have this idea that conservatives were of a different mindset, were small government, didn't want the state to grow exponentially and take all of your freedoms away. But that's just not true. Conservatism is no different. Conservatives, mind you, not your everyday conservative that you happen to know. Even though they may exhibit signs of this in the future, you should watch for that. But the elite conservatives never fight for anything but the status quo. They fight to conserve what is happening now. They will pay lip service to the Constitution. They will pay lip service to the good old days. They will talk about how the New York Times once was a good paper, and they used to tell the truth, and there was less bias, blah, blah, blah. Bullshit. Walter Durante stood up for Stalin. But this is just another example of the right taking up the fight that the leftists have put forward for so long. Look at Social Security. At one point, the conservatives fought against Social Security, but now they fight for it. Conservatives used to fight against gay marriage. Kind of a dumb thing to do in general. But now, a few years after it's been made legal, boy, do they just love gay marriage. There are so many instances of this over history that you can look into. It's how it works. It's how the wheel of history turns. Conservatives are there to stop the flow of progress towards quote-unquote bad things. They fail, and then they decide, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to fight for that stuff that I said I was against five years ago. Just watch it. It's how it works. Can we talk for a second about how screwed up this is? There are people out there 
who have had their kids, they've taken them in for vaccines, and they've had vaccine injuries. Vaccine injuries exist. That's a statement of fact. The drug companies that sell vaccines are protected by the federal government so they can't be sued for these injuries. That's a fact. People are different. People have different bodies. They react to things differently. They react to aluminum or mercury or whatever in different ways, just like any other allergy. Someone can have allergies to any number of things that might be in a vaccine. That's just a fact. So vaccines like any other drug, like when you go to the doctor and the doctor says, here is your drug for your heart, because otherwise you might have a heart attack. Before he gives you that drug, he has this list of warnings that he's supposed to talk to you about. Potential side effects. What can go wrong? Have you ever walked into a doctor's office with your kid to get a vaccine and the doctor actually read you what the side effects might be outside of maybe a fever? No, it's because they don't do it. Regardless of your feelings about vaccines, or how well they work, or what good they do for the general population, that doesn't matter because not everybody is created equally. And I don't mean that some people are worse than others. I mean that some people have stronger bodies than others, and that's okay. But we don't take this into consideration with vaccines. If someone airs even that worry out loud, they become demonized. That's how that works. If you don't follow the approved script if you are not an NPC about vaccines and about death to people who aren't for vaccines, you're somehow wrong. You're somehow something worse than human. You deserve, like Mr. Wilson says, to have your property taken away, your kids taken away, and you be put into a Stalin-esque re-education camp. The state's not on your side. The Republicans are not on your side. The Democrats are not on your side. Most of the people in the Libertarian Party are not on your side. Here's the deal. You cannot spend yourself rich, and you cannot vote yourself free. The only person on this planet that can make you free is you. You have to choose to be free. You have to choose what happens to your body, what laws that you obey and which you disobey, the amount of risk you take in your life to be away from the state and to be away from the people who would oppress you, who would take away your rights, all of this is in your hands. There is a certain amount of risk to it. But if you're to be free, if you are to say that you believe in liberty, you have to know what you're willing to do to keep your liberty. You have to determine what's right and what's wrong you have to find the truth, and you cannot and should not take the word of the consensus or the voters to be your mode of morality. Morality cannot be decided by committee. It can only be discovered by the individual. Truth is out there. It's your job to find the truth. It's your job to make yourself free. So for God's sake, make yourself free, because the state's not going to do it. Your local government's not going to do it. Your mom and your dad aren't going to do it. Your freedom is on you. Since we're on the uh, subject of freedom, like always, I wanted to move into something that happened in the UK. I don't know if you noticed this, but the UK had some elections this last week, and wow, were they something. Over the past few years, there's been a big fight in the UK about Brexit. Britain wanted to leave the European Union. They held a referendum. The people spoke. They said, we do not want to be a part of the European Union any longer. We are done. Of course, a lot of leftists over here didn't like that. A lot of leftists over in the UK didn't like that. And let me tell you, if you want to hear a loud minority, that's where you go. Take yourself over to the left and find out what they think. Because they will often be repudiated if, for some reason, they don't talk the masses into it. And in the UK this week, in their elections, the people came out, the people voted. Voting's stupid. But hey, people came out, they voted, and they decided, you know what? We do want Brexit. We want to be out of the European Union. So the Labour Party has had the worst showing and the worst result since 1935. It's incredible. Boris Johnson has actually secured the biggest majority since Margaret Thatcher's 1987 victory. Jeremy Corbyn, the old Stalinist that was running as the Labour Party's leader and would have been the new prime minister if the Labour Party had actually won, lost. And people are like, oh, it's just a matter of Jeremy Corbyn's personality. People just didn't like his personality. That's why he lost. Of course, the guy was, he was an old school authoritarian lefty. 
what do you expect? But he lost badly. The Remainers lost badly. The European liberal tears are amazing right now. So let's move on to the numbers. The Tories, who previously were a minority government, now have an 80-seat majority with 365 MPs compared to Labour's 203. The Scottish National Party got 48, and the Liberal Democrats got 12. The Tory vote only rose by 1%, but Labour's fell by 8% on the 2017 general election. And I have to tell you, this is, this is so funny because I, I have plenty of links for you to look through in my show notes for this week. The one, the one that I decided to read from actually comes from the World Socialist website. <laughs> uh, and it says, Johnson's return consolidates the most right-wing government in post-war Britain history with devastating consequences for the working class. He has pledged to move swiftly to get Brexit done and to complete the Thatcher Revolution. The withdrawal agreement bill paving the way for Brexit on January 31st will have its second Commons reading on Friday, December 20th. But to put... The icing on the cake. Your Stalinist boy, Jeremy Corbyn, has decided he's no longer going to be the leader at the next election after this crushing defeat, and crushing it was. So, you can't vote yourself free, but by God, you can vote yourself a middle finger towards the people you don't like. And that's what the Tories did. That's what the people of the UK did. They said, you know what? We wanted to leave the European Union. We wanted to be out of this mess. We wanted to be away from people in other countries making unilateral decisions, executive decisions without a vote, without us having any say in anything. And you know what? That's a little bit of decentralization, and I applaud the heck out of that. That's great. But my previous point still stands. Only you can make yourself free. Moving on to something that I thought was worth bringing up. Uh, when you thought that cops couldn't get any worse, <laughs> I found something that might make you change your mind. Even when you're dead, some of these cops won't stop frisking. <laughs> David Rojas, a pig in the Los Angeles Police Department, was caught on video fondling the breasts of a dead woman. You heard me. I didn't, I didn't misspeak just then. <laughs> a Los Angeles police officer has been charged with a felony after footage captured by a body camera allegedly showed him fondling a deceased woman's breasts. <sighs> I laugh, but that's, that's seriously screwed up. <laughs> this 27-year-old pig, a four-year veteran of the department, was charged with having sexual contact with human remains without authority. Wait, I, sexual content with human remains without authority. Is there some authority that can let him bang a corpse? Am I missing something here? Wow. Well, yeah, that's all that's there to the story. He was released on a $20,000 bail. So, you know, he's he's probably going to get off. <laughs> yeah, get off. Because he's a cop and, you know, they get off. <laughs> this pun just keeps giving. Moving on. Next, I just wanted to give you an update on what's going on in the Democratic race for the president. As you may know, there is another debate coming this next Thursday on December 19th, and there are seven Democratic candidates that are going to be in this debate. Elizabeth Warren, Bernie Sanders, Joe Biden, Andrew Yang, Amy Klobuchar, Tom Steyer, and Mayor Pete Buttigieg. That's all that's made it so far. The DNC had certain stipulations about who could make it into the debate. One of them was the number of individual contributors to their campaigns, donations, and if they did 4% or more on national polls or in early voting states. Unfortunately, the only thing close to an anti-war voice, Tulsi Gabbard, did not make the debate. Andrew Yang made it just under the wire, but Tulsi wasn't found eligible for the debate. Although... She had reached the donor amount to get in the debate, but her polling numbers were not good enough. But before it was announced that her numbers didn't quite make the cut, she pulled one of those, you can't fire me, I quit moves. She said that she wasn't going to take part in the debate whether or not she made it in because it was more important to spend time in the voting districts and have face-to-face -face interactions with the people in those early voting states than it would be in a debate. Quick note, Miss Gabbard, this is dumb and no one buys it. Everyone that you would be talking to and trying to get votes from, from these states, they're 100% going to be watching that debate. That's a fact. So, I mean, at least do something different. Host a live stream where you respond to each question and where you pause it or something and immediately respond to what the other candidates have to say. For the love of God, 
Show how you're different. Don't just act like, oh, hey, I knew I wasn't going to be good enough, so I decided to make the first move and say, I mean, come on, no one's buying your bullshit. You're clearly just trying to get out ahead of it so you don't look like you lost. That's the honest move here. I would have preferred that, for the love of God. But at least you're not Cory Booker, who is slipping in the polls, obviously. I mean, the guy looks so strange to me. I mean, it's like he was made in a laboratory, but they didn't quite get the mix right. And he just, he looks awkward and uncomfortable. I don't know how he's gotten as far as he has. But instead of saying, No, you can't fire me. I quit. He decided to say that polling is bullshit. (laughs) He said, there's never been a point in the Democratic Party in our lifetime where somebody was leading in the polls and went to the White House this far out. Carter was around 1%. Bill Clinton was around 4 Obama on this day was almost 20 points behind Hillary Clinton in 2007. Polls do not predict from our party who becomes president. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, God. I mean, the dude's going to lose... I would, if I had to make a choice, I would say he's the next one to drop out of the race. Easy. I got such good news. I think my prayers are being answered. I know I've said it before. There is nothing I want more for this next election season than to have Hillary Clinton come back onto the scene, become the nominee, and go up against Trump again because the entertainment value of that, oh, beautiful. I can't imagine something more wonderful than that. I got a little hint of hope this week. Apparently, (laughs) the latest Harvard-Harris presidential poll shows Clinton at 21% support, edging out former Vice President Joe Biden with 20%. (laughs) The survey shows Bernie Sanders in third with 12%, and Senator Warren placing fourth at 9%. The Democratic voters in this poll so desperately want a repeat of 2016 that it's amazing and i want it to just because there's no way that hillary clinton wins a second time i don't know at this point based on how these people debate how they talk how they come after trump i don't think any of them could take him because he's changed the way the game is played the advent of social media and elections has changed the whole face of them his ability and willingness to attack anyone for anything oh it's so fantastic he he told hillary clinton that he was gonna throw her in jail (laughs) he said to ted cruz's face that his father killed john f kennedy there's no playing this game on his level i don't see unless they impeach him and somehow get the senate to actually vote for conviction And for removal from office, I don't see it happening. But please, God, please, give me Hillary Clinton again. I can't imagine the Twitter battles again. I can't imagine the memes, the videos. I want it for my entertainment and my entertainment only. That's it. Greta Thunberg is in the news again. Or, if I say it as NPR and native Swedish speakers might say it, Greta Thunberg (laughs) is in the news again because she was named as Times Person of the Year. Let's talk about Times Person of the Year for a quick second for two reasons. One, Hitler won Times Person of the Year. You won Times Person of the Year in 2006. Stalin won Times Person of the Year multiple times. Some good people have too. Times Person of the Year is supposed to be awarded to someone who inspires and changes the most lives throughout that year. I don't know about you, but I think Greta Thunberg hasn't inspired as many people as they think. She's inspired a lot of jokes. She's inspired a lot of memes. She's inspired the president to make jokes about her. She's made dirty looks. She's yelled at adults. I mean, I guess that counts it's fine. I think the best part is that they had to cut down a bunch of trees to put her on the front page of the time person of the year. But it really makes me think about something that I really hate about conservatives and progressives and liberals and the evangelical left and the evangelical right. They always latch on to kids. Um, C.J. Pearson on the right. Greta Thunberg on the left. (laughs) That's so much fun to say. Kid president, David Hogg, you name the person. The left and the right love using children as propaganda machines, be it against Trump, against guns, against Obama, against abortion, against everything. They take these children who are young and they make them figureheads for their movements. 
I don't, I think on the right, it tends to come out as a, well, look at this young person who, who understands these, these complex things, yet the left can't understand it. Left does the same thing with, especially with Greta Thunberg, but it's just exploitative. It's just using children. Greta Thunberg, Greta Thunberg is not wrong when she says that her childhood has been stolen from her, but it's not stolen from her because she learned some global warming catastrophe-ism in her school that scared her to death, though that was part of it. Fear-mongering is a part of it. But it's because these adults take children. They use them as political tools to get their way. Something about that is so disgusting to me. Stop using kids. If you have a point to make, make your point. Speak your mind. Say what you're going to say. Don't drag out some cutesy little kid, especially one with learning disabilities, and putting them out there for the world to make fun of, which we're going to do. Don't bring out young black kids and use them as a means to show that people who are black can be conservative. I don't know what seems more exploitative than that. The fact is, Greta Thunberg is Time's Person of the Year. We've all heard her, well, I haven't heard her voice because I've never watched her videos. We've all at least read what she's had to say. We've seen gifts. We've seen images of her giving hateful looks to the president of the United States. She's made some waves. So good for her. She's Time's Person of the Year. Fine. But for the love of God, people, let the girl go back over the ocean and go back to school, even though she can't at any moment and chooses not to. Let the kids be kids. Don't drag them into this adult world of fear-mongering bullshit. Let them be kids. Let them learn. Don't fill their heads with nonsense and propaganda and scripts. Don't make them NPCs before they're 18 years old. For the love of God, leave the kids out of it. Leave Baron Trump out of it. Leave Greta Thunberg out of it. Leave C.J. Pearson out of it. Leave the Covington kids out of it. Leave David Hogg out of it. For the love of God, I hate seeing him. Get him out of my sight, man. Well, there you go. Those are our stories for the week. I'm happy to be here, and I'm happy you're listening. If you want to find me online on any social media platform, just type, this is MLGA. Do it on Facebook, do it on Twitter, do it on Instagram. I'm there. Do the same with MLGA Network. You'll find us. Also, go to thisismlga.com and go to mlganetwork.com. You'll find my show at the first, and at the second, you'll find all of our original shows as well as some other great shows that we curate so that you can go on that website or go into your iTunes feed and let it play. We've got Tom Woods that comes up. We've got Ron Paul's Liberty Report. We've got Dave Benner's show. We've got all of Mike Meharry's shows. We've got all of the good stuff. In our originals, as always, we've got Make Liberty Great Again. We have Techno Agorist. We have Thank You for Your Servers. We have Lesbertarian. We have Voluntary Vixens. And finally, we have The Morning Drive with David. We have enough shows to fill your whole week for at least, you know, 30 minutes a day-ish. Check them out. Stay with us. Please contact us. Give us ideas. Tell us what you want to hear, because we want to hear what you have to say. As always, as always, stay sane.